Welcome to RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. I hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. In this edition, I'm going to be talking about what do you consider a good camping site? Uh, what do you consider the perfect campground? It's all about your experience. If you're born in the Midwest and you only go uh, 100 miles this way and that way, uh, a good campground is anywhere where you can take the children, uh, have a good time, do some fishing maybe, uh, do some hiking, and uh, just uh, hang around the campfire. That's a pretty uh, basic, according to me, uh, campground experience. Others of you are more rustic. You want to go off-road uh, somewhere far off the beaten path. You have the vehicles, you have the income to go off-road and go camping. And you go with a group or go by yourself uh, and enjoy the Great American Outdoors, uh, you know, rustic style. So each of us according to their ability. I'm going to talk about my experience. I grew up in, of course, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we're about 100 miles from the Sierras, uh, uh, 70 miles from the Carmel and the coast, the the coast of California, Santa Cruz is only 45 minutes away. You know, and of course, if you can take some of those circuitous roads across the Loma Prieta Mountains, and uh, you can land in some of those very small communities on the coast between Santa Cruz and San Francisco. So there's plenty of camping down there. There's plenty of camping in the great state of California, especially when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s when I went camping quite a bit in the 80s, etc. with my children. The list goes on and on. So it's all a matter of what your experience is and what do you expect. I've been uh, spoiled or programmed or whatever way you want to call it to expect certain things when I go camping. And I've also grown to, since I live in Texas and Fort Worth, Texas, to uh, expect uh, to lower and tamp down my expectations. Uh, growing up, I would go to the Pacific Ocean, take my kids, we'd go hiking, uh, we'd go fishing, we'd sit around the campsite in a tent and have some great chow and hang out and spend about two, three, four days uh, in the, you know, on the coast. Very nice. My wife and I would get in our uh, modified van, Class B, which we had a queen-size futon in the back and, and, uh, and a di you know, shovel to dig a... <laughs> Uh, to go to the toilet, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in the Sierras. And we'd have a great time. My wife and I would have an absolute great time. Sometimes we go to places which actually have pit toilets and services. But the great majority of the time, we roughed it quite a bit. And we were in our 30s, 40s, and it was not an issue. We had a great, great time. We remember days when the br it was brutally cold in the 20s. And we say, hey. This is perfectly fine. We got the nice proper jacket and hang out there. And we really enjoy those adventures. Or we'd go to the Baja and hang out there. We'd drive in our truck and uh, do some truck bed camping. No problems at all. And, or visit my brother instead at his house, of course. And uh, we had a great, great time. So there's different types of camping. And what are your expectations of? Uh, again, if you're from the Midwest... You have a nice little family, you know, great family unit. Fabulous. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, you can go camping, you know, 50 miles that way, 100 miles that way, and enjoy it. Uh, I went to uh, recently to Cora, Iowa, to Pulpit Rock Campground. Everybody was jammed in there like sardines. Uh, there's a nice little river with, uh, you know, uh, stocked trout. Very nice. And uh, you can ride your bike around there. You can go for little hikes next to the highway or just go in town and do some shopping. Very nice. Typical, you know, Midwestern uh, camping adventures. If you don't mind, again, not seeing any mountains, not seeing, uh, you know, something tremendous like that. Okay. Some people, you know, enjoy that experience. They just like the fact that they can be with their family, friends, associates, or by themselves. It's so everybody has their own uh, idea of what camping is. And, you know, some of us don't have a lot of uh, extended family. We don't have brothers, sisters, children, wife, husband, et cetera, et cetera. So we go by ourselves. I know a lot of people that are single 
uh, even in their advanced age like me, 70 years old, 70, I'm 71, okay. But uh, I am playing a move specifically so I can go do some better camping nearby. I've been looking at communities like uh, Redding, California, the fishing capital of California, Chico, California, which is an, a college town, very nice, very nice downtown, famous for its Viking breweries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And across the border, there's Medford, Oregon, absolutely glorious, absolutely fantastic community uh, with great fishing, uh, you know, salmon, trout, plenty of mountains to do some hiking. I'm some serious mountains to hike in. And then, of course, you can just take a couple hours and you're at the coast. You can do some crabbing. You can do some fishing, etc. And it's awfully cool down there in comparison to where I'm at. Today's expected temperature, uh, considering, you know, heat index, is supposed to be 115 today. It's supposed to be 109, but with the heat index, it's supposed to be around 115. Muy, muy, muy caliente. So for the rest of my life, I would like to be where I'm accustomed to camping, where I'm accustomed to fishing, uh, and the t temperatures that I'm accustomed to. I like wearing a sweater during the spring and summer. Just call me goofy, but I do not like doing, you know, <laughs> sweating profusely. Uh, at night, in those, you can just move from like uh, Medford and go up in the mountains, and it's cooler. You can go from uh, Chico, California, Rain, California, to the mountains about an hour and a half away, and it's cooler. It's quick, quick way to get cool. Just like in San Jose when I grew up, you can be in San Jose in the valley and go to the Santa Cruz Mountains, and it'd be what? It'd be cooler, and that's the reality. You can go to the beach where it's, you know, it's sunny and bright in San Jose, but you can go uh, 45 minutes and you're in Santa Cruz, and it's foggy, and it's a bit cooler. I'm used to that. I got spoiled by that. I cannot go outside right now. Yesterday I was doing some yard work and I almost passed out. Uh, I did some work on the vehicle yesterday and I almost passed out. I have to be very careful drinking a lot of water in Texas and Fort Worth, especially with global warming. Hey, global warming. So I hope you enjoyed this little video talking about what your expectations are in camping. I was just watching this video of these two old, old folks uh, who get a lot of uh, play with the RV industry. They're always getting free RVs and free, you know, land and all kinds of crazy stuff. And they're talking about how great it is to camp in Indiana. I've camped in Indiana. It's okay. It's just okay. But if that's all you're used to or you're trying to promote the state for camping, it's fabulous. It's amazing. Who needs to go to, uh, you know, you know, Maine on the coast and do some camping down there? Who needs to go to uh, British Columbia in the hills up there? Who needs to go to this, the, you know, the coast off of Carmel and do some camping down there? You don't need to do that. You can stay in Indiana. <laughs> this has been Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And ring the bell for future notificaciones, notifications. Muchas, muchas gracias. And please leave your kind and friendly comments below. Of course, everybody according to their budget, if uh, fowls of the 1%, I'd just be, you know, in the Greek islands, uh, be in, you know, Australia fishing off the coast. I'd be doing a hell of a lot more stuff than I am doing right now. Each according to the budget. If you have a very low budget, Big family, a lot to do, you know, spend, clothes, school supplies, <laughs> bikes, all kinds of stuff, medical care for your children. You are not going to, you know, uh, be one of those jet setters and spend a lot of money you know, taking the whole crew uh, to Hawaii or to uh, Barcelona to have a vacation. You're not going to do that because you're on a tight, tight working class budget. My daughter and her husband recently took the whole family to uh, Hawaii. They had a great time, but they have the budget to do that. My other uh, niece and nephew just bought a brand new, you know, uh, Rivian R1T and also the SUV. You know, they bought his and hers Rivians. Very nice. And my other daughter, of course, just bought a new Tesla. So each according to the budget, I do not have that kind of income. I'm driving uh, an eight-year-old truck. My wife's driving a four-year-old Subaru 
we are not of that class. But we know what we can do according to our budget. We've accumulated a certain amount of wealth over the last 50 years, and now we're gonna move back to a smaller community on the West Coast where we can buy a house. At least that's a plan. Hope you like this video. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Leave your kind and friendly comments below. Abajo, muchas gracias. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. It's supposed to be 115, considering the heat index. Gracias. <laughs> Adios. Bye-bye.